Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I have the pleasure of speaking once again with Dr. Liz Lister, MD. Hello, Dr. Liz, how are you doing? Good morning. Doing well, thank you. How are you both doing? Uh, doing great. Dr. Liz, I've got a, a male hormone question for you. Hmm. Um, testosterone, we've talked about hormones in the past many times. We've talked about testosterone. Um, but the real question I have this time is, is some confusion between uh, what testosterone does in terms of libido. Uh, we, mm. we, I remember a conversation we had where you described how testosterone actually affects our mood. Um, and the, the lack of, that's what I remember, the lack of testosterone is what makes uh, men crabby, not too much testosterone, which I, a great uh, a great eye opener for me. But in terms of libido, of course, um, it is the classic image of uh, what men need. I, I see all these commercials for increase your T, or if you've got low T, or pills that uh, make you a man. And tell, let's talk right. about testosterone <laughs> and libido. And since I'll, I'll throw this a little more complicated, another curve at you, since we know that women need testosterone to a certain degree, does it affect, if, if testosterone is a libido increaser, does it affect women's libido as well? I think we want to let it go over to Dr. Liz, because otherwise, <laughs> John, John, you're going to eat up the entire four hours of- uh, I got lots of questions. Okay, uh, Dr. Liz. Not only do you have a lot of questions, but researchers have lots of questions as well. Oh, and those are all wonderful, too. but those are great questions. And that's exactly right. We know for sure, and we have talked about it here, the in extremely important role of testosterone for men's health in general. Okay, right? Men with higher testosterone levels have a lower incidence of prostate cancer. They feel better, lower incidence of cardiovascular disease. I keep learning about this at my anti-aging conferences. So it's very, very interesting to me because I want everybody to be in the best health that they can be. Your question, however, still stands. How big of an impact does testosterone have directly on libido? Right. So you mentioned a few things that are, let's say, intermediary factors, right? Like if someone is not in a good mood, that does not help libido. It does not help the relationship. It does not help the communication. Okay. I, same with, for men, erectile function. So erectile function is somewhat influenced by testosterone, but not 100%. So for example, in a man with low testosterone, he still may be able to have perfectly good erectile function. However, he may not feel good. He may not have good energy. And then in that man replenishing the testosterone what type of impact will that make on libido? And the answer is it really varies. It depends on all these different variables. Okay, mm. so that's that's really so so I definitely think it helps. I have seen it help. Let me, I let, would say oh, I'm sorry, let me take uh, um, John off the hook uh, and ask uh, a question about uh, if you could incorporate this, uh, Dr. Liz, in your continuing conversation. We see a lot of commercials ex-baseball players and football players and talk about, you know, everything really sucked until they took this magic little pill and now all of a sudden uh, they are uh, performing better in the gym and every other place you can think of. Uh, are, yes. there, are there any non-prescription effective ways to deal with this? So as you get back to your, your, your yes. conversation, uh, appreciate if you uh, maybe uh, help either dispel or approve of some of these things that to me look a little bit uh, shaky. Well, it's interesting and it really is a challenge art because in this country, the supplement industry, there are a lot of studies and data on supplements. Then, and these supplements often help, they often really do help, but the data is not taught to doctors, at least not in the United States. So I will say that sleep is essential. I learned recently at the anti-aging conference that I went to that correcting sleep apnea in men 
can raise your testosterone level by up to 95 points. That's oh, huge. Boy. That's huge. And again, it's really important for your health. We're talking about libido, but very, very important for your health. Okay. You need to have good cardiovascular health, good blood flow in order to feel good and sleep well and have good energy as well as good erectile function. It's, it's, it's a package deal for all of us as human beings. Same for that, women. I know we're going to talk about women too. Oh, okay. Good. Good. That was my yeah. next question. Is that it, it must be different ever so maybe slightly different, but different for women. Correct. It is. I'm going to, I agree slightly different for sure. For women, again, definitely a package deal. Sleep is essential for us in terms of having good libido and feeling good. All right. A lot of different hormones affect women's mood, especially estrogen. Sure. Okay, so we have lots of hormones in common. And a lot of people don't even realize that women have testosterone. It's a very uh, a, abundant hormone in women's bodies and has a great deal of function. It affects pretty much every tissue, even in a woman's body as well, and especially the brain and the genital organs. So when women have better testosterone levels, they may have better sensation in terms of genital effect of it. And then the brain effect, what I have seen in my patients and in myself as well, is that testosterone is a very stabilizing hormone for mood. So the idea that it causes people to be ragey or angry, that is not the usual. That is not what happens to most people, men or women, with some testosterone supplementation. Does it help with libido? The answer appears to be yes. This is with various studies that have been done that I reviewed getting ready for our conversation today. It does, in fact, appear to make a difference. There's still discussion and controversy among doctors of how much and what kind of dosing and how to do the dosing. At this point in time, there is nothing FDA approved for women for testosterone. So we need good sleep. As well, in women and men, exercise will is another way to answer your question, Art, is to boost testosterone with exercise. We know that that definitely is the case. We've all been less active in the recent couple of years, and the more that we can do to get back to activity, it makes a huge difference to our hormonal health. Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll take a, a push on this a, a little bit. So uh, without taking... Uh a super T pill, uh, whatever that might happen to be, if there, if one really does exist, uh, exercise, things that you could do without a doctor's prescription, uh, exercise, sleep, and if you can't yes. sleep, especially for uh, as men get older, they tend to get up a couple of times during the middle of the night, whereas they might have been able to sleep through uh, for biological reasons, uh, they, they get up to go to the, the bathroom or something like that. Uh, sure. So if that happens too frequently, then perhaps getting an aid to help sleep through that and not have to get up so often uh, would be uh, uh, maybe a treatment to boost your testosterone, might it not? To make yeah, sure you get more sleep? Okay. Anything that helps sleep quality is going to help your health. The, the more we learn, the more amazing it is, all the work that our body does while we sleep, including yeah. helping with hormone levels and testosterone levels and libido in general. As I always say, especially for women, we cannot have good healthy libido hyped up on caffeine. That's not how it works for us. Mm. <laughs> well, this has been uh, very good advice, uh, wonderful explanation. And um, I think it simply points to the fact that we need to be in overall good health. Um, to the best degree we can. Mm. Yes. yes. And, and not afraid of replenishing hormones and boosting them where we can. There are no, especially for women, no reports of health risk with testosterone. No increases in cancer, it's occasional mm. mild side effects, but that's about it. That's for women. And, and even, and for men, Really, you know, the side effects that women have, you know, maybe a little bit of facial hair, that's not an issue for men. Mm. So it was pretty much all positives. 
uh, so, for so, testosterone. So I think men. it would be I think it would be fair to say that if uh, uh, in order to keep in the best shape that you can uh, uh, with testosterone and other things uh, for a feeling of well being, if you're you should discuss it with your uh, uh, GP. Uh, I guess that must be it was family doctor today we call them. Um, and if that person isn't fully informed of it or uncomfortable talking about things because of for whatever reason they they may may look at you know cardiovascular things like heart disease more often than anything else is go find yourself somebody like Dr. Liz who specializes in hormones and uh, have that conversation but don't be afraid to have the conversation. And John, Dr. I think I think the Dr. best Liz? thing for you right now, the best thing for you is to say goodbye and take a nap. I, that's where I was going, Art. <laughs> I want to I, I want to thank Dr. Liz again. We'll see you soon. I hope. I hope so. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.